All right, guys. So today we're going to be tackling uh, bad. We're going to do the spark plugs to make sure we're fuel efficient, especially because we're getting close to like 30, 35,000 miles since I've had it. I don't know when they were done last. I've had this truck since it was 163,000 miles. It's now at 194, almost a year. I put on a lot of miles on these vehicles, but uh, let's dig into it. You're going to need a 3 8 driver with an extension. It'll be very helpful. The socket you're going to be using is a socket specifically designed for spark plugs that has a rubber grommet inside. So when you get it completely loose, you're able to pull it out. It basically will grab the spark plug for you. And it is a 5 8 drive. 5 8 socket with a 3 8 drive. My bad, I'm a little bit off of the map today. We'll need a knuckle. This will help a lot, especially as you get back to the firewall because it's kind of bend a corner a little bit. Quarter inch driver with an extension. You're going to need the 10 millimeter socket and the 8 millimeter. Very helpful for this. A flathead will be useful and some anti CDs. Let's get in there. All right, initially, just overlooking the motor here, that leak out the way. It's all now. You're going to have two 10 millimeter sockets on each side here. You're going to want to take those off. Remember, when you go to put them back on, you don't have to crank them down too, too crazy. Just enough. This thing's made of foam, so it's pretty pliable. Don't be surprised if you find a little nest underneath these. It's the craziest thing where animals and wildlife will appear. Cool. It just pulls straight up. Slide that up and out of the way. If you want to be like me, you can put them back on just so you don't lose them. I don't have to do that, though. That way they can be found later. And we're going to start with the passenger side, work our way back. We'll do the same thing on the driver's side, work our way back. First off, we're going to want to push down our tab, releasing it just like that. Should be able to slide it straight off. There, it's out of the way. Eight millimeter socket. I apologize to you guys. I was misinformed. I'm coming from 2012 where the high pressure fuel pumps on the driver's side. It's actually on the passenger side on a 13th gen. Kind of interesting. Wonder why the change. If anybody knows, make sure to comment down below. We're going to just slide up, coil pack. There you go, just a small release. Set that there, that thing is very hot. You don't have to do this, but I like to, just so I don't forget where I put it. I can remove the actual spark plug. With this extension I have, it has a small pivot in it. It allows it just enough room so it's not so rigid. The hook can snap on. Sometimes these can be pretty tough, so just be patient, get a good feel for it. There we go. I like to usually do them by hand. Once they get loose, just like that. You can have a lot more sense of what you're working with. You can feel resistance. If anything feels like it's snagging or holding up. There we go. Doesn't look too bad. Worst thing with these, usually you will see cracking the base. This one looks okay. This looks like it's had quite a bit of life run through it though, so it's a good thing we're getting these done. I want to get the new one. It's an older bottle of anti seize so it looks real rough. But all we're gonna do is have it on there, just like that. Looks good. And you can take your thumb and really just rotate it around. Get on all those threads. As long as it doesn't get on the tip, you're good. Looks pretty good. Again, I like to kind of put it in by hand. Just like that. Got it lodged in. Start hand. Just waiting for the feel. Make sure nothing cross threads. Take your time. Feels good. Going in straight. Once we get resistance, we will put on the driver. I hit resistance pretty quick, so I actually ran down all the way by hand. Once it gets tight, just gonna give it a little snug. That's it. And it's done. So now we'll pull the eight millimeter bolt back out on the coal pack. We can check that. Actually, let's add dielectric grease too. Back in here now. My apologies. And take the dielectric grease. And the excess. You wipe it off on there. Just a small little splotch, just like that. Didn't take much. Slide it back down. Wait for the click as you'll feel it. Be solid. Feels good. Put your tab back in. Here, click. It did not click. It's so weird. These are so much more silent than the 13th gen. The 12th gen. Softer ring. It's more efficient, I guess. It's crazy. All right. Moving on to the next one. Let's see what this driver's side first one looks like. Let's see how rough it is. Stoutly. Most of them, they just they look like they've had a lot of hours on them. Even though none of them are cracked. Like the 2012 3.5 EcoBoost that I have, it every 40,000 miles, this thing will just be spider webbed with cracks in the porcelain. So unless this motor does better, we'll find out. 
so far that's in pretty good shape other than just the fry at the end it's looks about average so we'll mark it and see how many miles it is and check it in 40,000 miles and see if they actually look like they need to be done all right get your bad boys put them back together be careful here not to get dirt on it all good slide it on down Take your time by hand, feeling for those threads. Feels good. So we hit resistance and then we're gonna put the ratchet on it again and go back all the way to the end. Thank God for it's a V6, not a V8. Saves us a lot of time. Like I said, when it gets snug, just put a little bit of a, just a little eh behind it. I know that sounds funny, but in the automotive industry, a lot of people understand a little, uh, it's code. It's time to get a little bit of dilute your grease. So we have positive contact, saves us from corrosion. Put that bad boy back on. We're just thinking with these is they don't really click. They just kind of slip on, but hey, whatever Ford's doing, they're making some great products. So I will take it. Get snug. And these again, they're little brass dowels that go into the valve cover. So just a little snug. It doesn't have to be crazy tight. It's just to keep them from coming back up. And that, we're done. Move on to the next one. Alright guys, that all done. Now we can just simply slip this back on. We get the uh, camera just here. We're going to slip in the bar there at the back. It slips in and tucks down. That's all it is. The only thing you have to watch out for is your oil spout over there. And I have to line it up and kind of press it down. I forgot to grab these nuts off here. That's my bad. Slip it in, slide it down, press it over. Studs are poking out. Just going to simply get them started. Remember, this is a 10 mil on each of these. Let's see, screw, screw, screw. Get it tight. Snug as a bug. All right, guys, that's going to be it for the educational portion of this format video. If you'd like to stick around and not help me uh, kill the algorithm with the rest of the video, uh, you can watch the entertainment portion where I finish the rest of the spark plugs. But if not, thank you guys for sticking around. At least hit subscribe, that'll help me. Uh, appreciate all the love and support, and I hope you guys come back for more because I will definitely be, whoa, <laughs> doing more with this truck. It's so much fun, holy crap. <laughs> uh, like I said, you'll be missing out if you don't stick around. Whoa, daddy. <laughs> Thanks guys. All right. side front, middle, rear, passenger side front, middle, rear. As you can see, most of them, they look pretty good. I didn't see any cracking like I did on my 2012. My 2012 has almost 500,000 miles on it. 
no joke, I'll show you. I mean, there's links to it all over my channel. Go and watch it. It's insane. I love Ford products. They go forever. But most of the time I've found with the EcoBoost, what they end up doing is putting these under so much strain because they're trying to compensate to basically be a V8 that it will cause the porcelain to crack a little bit sooner. And that's when you'll start to see some misfires. Like when you go to get on the highway and you throttle real hard, you know, trying to get up 70, you'll feel it and kind of hesitate and feel a little weak. Usually that's what happens. Not with this truck. It wasn't really feeling that, but you know, they're, they're rated at 40,000 miles. You need to have a, a change time interval and I've never changed them. I did notice fuel mileage going down a little bit. So we opted to change them. Not a bad idea. I think they did all right. They look good. If you wanted a couple more tips on some things that I used in the video, um, a lot of people would probably disagree with using a cheater bar, as it's called, to basically multiply your strength whenever you're trying to take something out. But these little bad boys were seized in there so hard, I needed to put some extra strength on it because it's at risk. When you're using just your bare hands like this, if you slip, sometimes you slip, you could turn it and then you could really mess up a spark plug, break it off on the cylinder or something. But with this, it multiplies your strength. Uh, whoever's watching this might be like, this is just dumb. Just talent off in the comments. Let me know how dumb it is. But you can easily guide it. So when you're putting five pounds of pressure here, it's putting 25 here. It's multiplying your strength. So it doesn't take nearly as much effort to do it. And you can be smooth and fluid to get it broke free. Once it's broke free, that's it. You don't need it. Do not put it on with this. That's too much power. You'll strip your threads. But uh, definitely want to get yourself some anti-seize. That will help it in the future. So the next time we go to take them off, we'll see a difference vastly to be able to take them off by hand. Doesn't mean it's a guarantee. It does help though. Should keep them from seizing in the cylinders. But uh, yeah, as always, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate all the love and support. Stick around because it looks like we're going to break 2,000 subscribers and we're going to see where this thing goes. But thank you guys for all the love and support. And we'll catch you in the next one.